This mysterious aura that Calypso has is filled with beauty. Never have I seen a teacher with such a mystical presence within a school. Usually in animation that focuses on a much younger audience, we don't pay too much attention to the adults we see within it. Bluey, on the other hand, not only focuses on the personalities and relationships of the adults, but also how they are challenged and what they do to overcome them. Although I think there is one adult within the show that is filled with an aura that is viewed as spiritual and connects with the children she looks after in a way that none of the other adults have within the show. The episodes within the Glass House Primary School have always had a different feel compared to other episodes that we have seen so far. And the reason for that is because of Calypso and the way she teaches her lessons. These episodes define the magical aura she brings to the table when she is featured. And father son is home. Brother wind comes blowing in to welcome home the gnome. Now the first thing that comes to mind about Calypso and what she brings to the show is the very first episode she was introduced in with the same name. What differs from a lot of preschool settings is that there is a strong sense of community within the space. Throughout the episode, there were a variety of games that were being played. However, as the games goes on, they slowly become united, which symbolizes the amazing village that was created by Honey. All of this was guided by the small suggestions and conversations Calypso has made with the kids. She uses her keen eye to witness certain issues some kids may be having as they play, and she tries assisting passively by suggesting other kids to talk with them in a way to build those relationships within the community. From helping Indy move out and rent Rusty's house that he is building, to Indy working for Bluey's fish and chip shop. These kinds of moves can help give the kids opportunities to interact with one another and have a sense of community. Even with one child not being very interested in participating, she was very patient with him, allowing the boredom to mitigate until he finds something to do to enjoy himself, even noting that patience when talking to him once he decided to become a fisherman, indicating that the fish will bite eventually. The thing I enjoy about this episode is the symbolism that happens when comparing the primary school to the gnome village that was built, really emphasizing the tight knit that the two have as the day goes on. We can easily compare the gnome Honey was requesting throughout the episode to Calypso as the one who watches over all. The way they were able to express the connection each of the students have with Calypso and each other was a very heartwarming and loving connection to see within the show that emphasizes the importance of having patience and showing support to one another that ends up building a community. You're going to see your buddies! Hooray! Now, go to the special place where you meet them. Yeah! <laughs> Now, while Calypso is able to show the power of unity, she also was able to give lessons about growing up and having certain feelings and interests you haven't thought of before. As we all know, there was a certain point in life where you start to evolve your care for the people you spend time with to the point where you want something more. Those feelings are attached to the very mysterious and oftentimes scary period called puberty something that Bluey and her classmates have not yet hit. However, there is a lot of seed planting that was placed within the episode that could potentially pair Bluey with someone way far into the future as they spend time together. Mackenzie. Even early on in the episode when Calypso was making an announcement for this morning, Bluey and Mackenzie asked what is it at the same time which Winton used as an opportunity to tease them about the idea of them getting married. The two quickly denied that statement. It's very clear that they see these two as an item far out into the future with the smallest amount of subtlety. For them being disgusted by the idea of being together, to even showing their annoyance with each other throughout the episode. However, 
Calypso may have a hand in the seed planting once again as she has announced that the buddies have come to visit the class. This is where we meet Mia and Captain, the buddies of Bluey and Mackenzie respectively. These two are in their final year of primary school, and the two of them are at a point where those feelings start to blossom. The big thing to focus on between the two as they hang out with their buddies is the way they look at each other whenever one duo passes by the other. Considering that Captain was trying very hard to get Mia's attention and wanted to know what she and Bluey were planning on doing for the day. You can easily see the amount of desire that Captain has for Mia, even trying to see if Mackenzie was willing to help out the girls, which he wasn't. However, they went along anyway for a half-baked reason. Then Mia did the same thing in return. Mia and Captain have very strong feelings for each other that Mackenzie and Bluey have no clue on. Love is something that is very complicated to explain, especially when you're very young. So Bluey and Mackenzie take a lot of events they witness in a very centered point of view and how it affects them. So when their buddies pay attention to each other rather than their younger counterparts, Bluey and Mackenzie feel hurt by their actions. That's when Calypso comes in to share her wisdom on what is actually happening. It can be hard being 12 years old sometimes. What do you mean? Here, give me those barky boats. I'll show you something. Calypso's storytelling has always been able to grab my attention fully with how carefully she explained the situation as a storyteller. Being able to utilize the barky boats to explain how this rush of emotions can come to you as you enter your teenage years. We again see the theme of symbolism come into play as the barky boats are representing the younger captain and Mia while the water represents not only the time they grew older but also the various emotions that are bottled up as it goes on. The amount of water that is rushed when Mackenzie and Bluey was forced to release it as the boats quickly weaved around the stream emphasizes the amount of unexplained emotion coming at the two at once, not knowing if they are able to handle all of it. Though I believe the ending of the story where the boats touch at the end symbolizes that Mia will be in a relationship with Captain once their feelings have finally settled as they grow older. This is something that happens to a lot of people growing up, and it's something that Mackenzie and Bluey may be starting very soon as they grow older. Once their buddies returned, the younger pups actually showed embrace with each other after playing barky boats together. Calypso sharing that knowledge in an engaging way not only helped the two learn about what is to come for many kids who spend a lot of time together growing up, but also gave them the tickets on the same journey both Captain and Mia are in the middle of. While Bluey and Mackenzie may not fully understand it, they do know that it's a journey that affects many kids as they get older when the time comes, and to be patient with those who are in it currently. But the gnome insisted that the old dog open the chest. And when he did, he discovered that it was full of treats! Another important thing for preschool teachers to teach is the use of creativity. Nowadays, many children within today's generation rely on many items in order to fulfill their own fun and interests. Not wanting to use imagination to help fulfill their interests for the day. So, teachers have to find certain ways to help children think outside the box when they want to play a certain game. That was something Calypso wanted to teach Bluey. In this episode, Bluey was relying on a typewriter to imagine herself as an author. However, Calypso was able to call everyone to hear her story for the day, which was fitting to what Bluey was going to be learning. We once again see the gnome being used as a symbol that represents Calypso as it convinces a begging old dog to open the chest he was sitting on, something he assumed to be empty, but turned out that it wasn't. This story does come into play later when we find out the typewriter disappeared while the story was being told. 
Now, keep in mind there are also other dogs in play that will help Bluey go to Calypso to figure out where the typewriter had gone, as the two also had some issues they needed to sort out. The first being Snickers, who was frustrated with how his body is limiting his ability to do the smallest things. The third pup would be Winton, who feels hurt from people wanting to avoid him and not understanding why. While the three of them have very different issues, they are all related since none of them are looking within, similar to what the story Calypso was telling in the episode, which again signifies the symbolism that is to be had on this journey that they each will soon find what they are looking for if they reflect. Of course, every journey has to have an obstacle. For this one, it will be the Terriers. Now this was a very interesting choice here, because out of all of the students, I do believe that the Terriers are filled with a ton of imagination. They are very interested in historical battles like ones that feature the Romans, or the ones based in medieval times like in this episode here. The big thing about the Terriers is how they were using their imagination to shoot arrows at our protagonists. While the trio wasn't really feeling the interaction at first, they went along with it anyways just to fulfill the Terrier's fun. That was honestly the best decision for them because these boys were going to help each of them solve their problems without realizing it. With the help of Bluey, Snickers was able to utilize his positive attributes as a sausage dog to sneak by one of the terriers as well as using his body to roll down kill very fast to take out the opposition. Meanwhile for Winton, he was able to realize the reasons people were trying to keep their distance because he was deemed a space invader, which is someone who stands way too close to people making them uncomfortable. So him being able to utilize that and figure out better ways to approach individuals helped solve his problem. While for Bluey, she was able to utilize her imagination with the help of Winton to bring out a shield, which is something that Calypso recognized and used as an example of how powerful imagination can be by the small suggestion she gave to Bluey to show her typewriter which gave Bluey the opportunity to rely on imagination to open her creativity when expressing herself. The last shot really shows the power Calypso has when the gust of wind blows the blanket she was sitting on to give the glimpse that she was responsible for the disappearing typewriter. This shows how just the smallest decision she made can really impact the community of the class and help them learn more about looking within themselves and using their imagination to broaden their creativity. And it shows that importance Calypso has as a teacher. One day, Indy's class were making animals out of beeswax. Now let's dive into wanting to change the perspective of things you can control. Now, I understand when it comes to the perspective of how people see you, not everyone is going to view you the same way, especially the more others recognize you for something that you have done in the past, for better or for worse. However, a lot of that is tied based on how you present yourself in front of those that surround you, whether it's family, peers, strangers, literally anyone you interact with, which leads us to how Calypso teaches that lesson in the episode stories. So this episode really strives on being able to use narration throughout it, starting things off with Calypso explaining the exposition, which is Indy making a horse out of clay, but everyone else sees it as a cow. However, Calypso narrates the story in a way that is very surprising to see. So rather than work at it, Indy never made anything out of beeswax ever again. What? Why? Because she told herself she wasn't very good. And we quickly get to the credits. This was not something I expected to happen. Instead of guiding Indy herself, we get sort of a swerve prior to continuing the story. Calypso basically took what Indy has said and allowed herself to go through her emotions about how the story went. We also see Winton play a huge role as well as we see him fully express himself 
in an unapologetic way, embracing that chaotic nature he has. After some time, Indy expressed how she didn't like how the story went down, and Calypso was willing to allow her to tell the story her own way with the help of a more muscular version of Winton. I do consider this to be one of my favorite episodes because of how Calypso was able to allow Indy and Winton control the narrative of the story being told, to perhaps change everything so that the original story will no longer be sad. As Indy and Winton try to figure out what was wrong with the horse figure, Calypso was only making small positive remarks and asking questions on what they do next allowing them to continue to have a positive outlook as well as show support for each other. I also enjoy how Winston is allowed to continue to bring his chaotic energy as he brings his wonderful creativity to put a spark on this story. So when they figured out what the problem was and worked on fixing it, they felt they were finally able to fix the cow horse. However, they turned cow horse into something else. Nice giraffe! Oh no! We turned cow horse into a giraffe horse! So now Winton is feeling remorse for not being good enough to fix the issue at hand. Now Wendy is back to square one. So Calypso asked her, does she join Winton and sob out rainbows or continue to work on the now made giraffe horse? She decided to go with the latter. After working on it a bit more, she was finally able to change the perspective everyone has to the correct animal she was making. Calypso once again was able to assist these kids in a more passive approach, allowing both Indy and Winton to figure things out as the story went along. She didn't push either of them into any direction with her narration. While it is good to try to do as much as you can to help a child go in the right direction in facing any issues, it can be very helpful for them to figure things out and show that resilience on their own. Whether it be making the important edits of a sculpture to make the visual more clear, or if it's to show support to a friend that is in need. It's important for kids to be able to respond to any sort of criticism in a healthy way and use it to improve themselves or whatever it is they are working on. Her ability to show Indy and Winton to take over narration duties is a wise one because these young narrators were able to learn how to change the outlook of the story overall in a fun and engaging way. These examples really show the amount of intrigue I have when it comes to the episodes that have the primary school as the setting. All of it ties to how Calypso was able to assist the kids in her class in ways I never really see a teacher do in any of the shows I've seen so far. A lot of her tactics are very creative and she plays a major role in the community without having to use much of her own voice. When she does use it, she uses it in ways that are small, but very significant. Her aura is felt throughout the entire community, and it's very beautiful to witness firsthand.